This is the word that came to Yirmiyahu from Yahweh. Because there's going to be in chapter 11 and, and further into other chapters, this idea of those who are prophesying a word that wasn't from Yahweh. And so this is one of those challenging th people, uh, things for the people that are listening, that live there at the time, and us even at our time, is people claiming they have a word from Yahweh when Yahweh didn't really say. You shall say to the children of Israel, say, thus say to Israel, cursed is the man who does not obey the words of this covenant. Hmm. So we could stop there and think, oh, is there another covenant here in Yirmiyahu? But he clarifies in verse 4 and says, which I commanded your fathers in the day I brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim. See, there is only that one covenant that he keeps being referred back to over and over again after the one that was in Egypt, when they came out of Egypt, when they ended up at Mount Sinai. He says, Curse is the man who doesn't obey the words of the covenant which I gave to your fathers when they came out of the land of Mitzrayim from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice and do according to all that I command you, and you shall be my people and I shall be your Elohim. That is the summary of the covenant. That's the simplicity of the covenant. Now, people out there get all upset with me and they say, Oh, all you talk about is do, 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 and all these works, works, works. I'm just reading you what the creator of the universe has said. What is, he, what is he upset about here? Obedience or the lack thereof. He's the one that that's all he talks about. The whole covenant is based on obey my voice. Okay, obedience, not, you know, just undeserved pardon and we just, you know, get to do whatever because, he, you know, the Messiah did it all for us. And so where's obedience being taught? I think a lot of us have this problem and we do it even as parents. Where does it say anywhere in Deuteronomy 28, I'm going to bring these curses on you, but as soon as they happen, if you, get, if you start wailing and crying and saying how unfair it is, I'm going to just take them away from you. Does it say that anywhere? No. But we do this as parents, right? We tell our child, if you do this, you're going to be punished. And then we punish them. But then they look so pathetic and they cry and they get upset and our hearts are torn watching them be all miserable. And what do we do? We take away the punishment or we shorten it up a little bit. And Abba says, oh, no, no, I'm not a human being. I'm, I am the creator of the universe. He says, don't you try that with me. He says, that's not going to be, yeah, you're going to cry. He says, look, see, I'm bringing evil on them, and they are unable to escape. And then they, they still cry out. He said, but I'm not going to listen to them. Not until everything that I promised would happen is done. Because if he mitigates it, guess what? He's breaking his own word. The Jerusalem of today is going to get and is already getting everything it deserves for its behavior. And Abba's going to say the same thing. Don't pray for them. The them that has the Dome of the Rock on the Temple Mount. The them that has all the other obscenities that's going on in Tel Aviv and other places with all the homosexuality and everything. The them, you're going to pray for them? That's not the Jerusalem being talked about in the psalm. The psalm is not referring to the Jerusalem of today. It was for the Jerusalem then that ended up being destroyed and messed up and the Jerusalem that's coming. Read the whole psalm to understand what that's talking about. He would not want you to pray against what is absolutely scriptural that you know is coming. And we know the armies of the earth are going to gather against Jerusalem. What does Kadosh mean? Kadosh means to be holy or set apart for the specific purpose of being of some use of the Almighty's. So now here he's saying these people are not kadosh because they're useless. I have no use for them. And we're supposed to be a kadosh nation. He said, I'm, I'm calling you. If you obey my voice, I will take you as my people and you will be a kadosh nation. A set apart people. In other words, you have been set apart because I have a use for you. And here he's now turned around the other way and said, this people is useless. I have no use for them. Everybody comes to me all the time trying to figure out what's the least I have to do. Wrong approach. People say, but do I really have to do that? Maybe not. Do it anyway. Can't hurt. You're never going to go before the throne, in my opinion, and have him say, you know, I'm so disappointed in you. You did more than I told you. I, don't, I can't see that happening. Okay? However, if you try to do the minimum 
and you missed a few spots, he may say, your heart was to try to do as little as possible, and that's not the heart I want in my kingdom forever. The so-called self-proclaimed prophets are saying to them, oh, you're not going to see the sword. Babylon's not going to come. You're not going to have a scarcity of food. All of this stuff is true peace I'm giving you in this place. So they're speaking on behalf of Yahweh when Yahweh hadn't said. Then Yahweh said to me, the prophets prophesy falsehood in my name. I have not sent them, nor commanded them, nor spoken to them. They are prophesying to you a false vision, worthless divination, and deceit of their own heart. Okay, so now we're seeing a whole different level of so-called self-proclaimed, self-anointed, self-appointed leadership. And what are they doing? They are prophesying out of the deceit of their own heart. Because they, in their own hearts, don't want to submit to the Creator. They, in their own hearts, don't want to submit to Yahweh. So they are trying to tell the people, peace, peace, when there's no peace. He says, and they've hidden their eyes. Now, by the way, notice the phrasing, hidden their eyes. In other words, they should have been able to see. These are not blind people, meaning even spiritually blind. They hid their eyes. They chose to, to hide their eyes from or, or to not look, to turn a blind eye towards my Sabbaths, and I'm profaning them. So they don't want to see the Sabbath. They don't want to see the Sabbaths, plural, the annual Sabbaths that come on the feast days, you know, the first day of unleavened bread, the last day of unleavened bread, Shavuot, trumpets, atonement, the first day of Sukkot and Shemini Atzeret, the eighth day, the seven annual Shabbats. They don't, they don't want to identify them and explain them. They've hidden their eyes from these things. It's incredible, the lack of fear. The lack of fear of Yahweh, that, you could, that it would not cause you to fear. I mean, I see a lot of people all over Facebook with that same lack of fear. Oh, they're so quick to jump in and straighten everybody out. And I said, as soon as you put yourself in a position of teacher, you better be in that fear. The fear of what if I'm saying something that's not right? What if I'm wrong about this and I'm leading somebody into a pit? What if they're going to listen to me? That should be something that you pray strongly about. What if people actually listen to me? I mean, I want you to listen to me as I share with you what he says, but I always am worried about, on some levels, you know what I'm saying? I'm worried about... What if I say something and they listen to me and it's wrong? Guess who that's on? Both of us. Because he said those who listen to the prophets, he's also going to take care of them in the streets. So it's on both of us. I have put uh, their way on their own heads, declares Yahweh. Yahweh says, don't get mad at me. This is on you. You knew to do right and you, do, you chose to do wrong. All of us knows to do right to some degree. And if we choose to do wrong, we're in trouble. You know, what did I do that? Remember that teaching from a few months ago? It's called Making Decisions, The Reason You Exist. He's watching you every moment to see what decisions you make. He says, I know what you know. I know the decisions you should make, and I want to see what you do. That's what life is all about. The reason you exist is so he can watch you to see what decisions you will make. Are you going to go and seek after the ear-tickling prophet who's going to say what you want to hear? Are you going to look for the teacher that interprets the verse the way you want to hear it interpreted? Or are you going to look for the anointed appointed, the one who's saying what Abba, you know, your heart resonates with the Ruach resonates and says, but really, even if I don't like this, I hear it's Abba speaking through that person. 